we've got uh, another, I would say, almost equally, almost equally as big of a contest going on down at Northwest Missouri State. They're hosting the Mavericks from Minnesota State. And when you talk, we're talking MIAA, NSIC, a quote-unquote, once again, down year for Northwest Missouri State. They finished 7-4 and four last year in the MIAA, and, and they're uh, trying to earn their stripes back. And 7-4 uh, and four a year for a program like that is... Uh, so many teams would kill for that, right? Northwest, not one of those teams. They need to be at the top of the top. And for them not to be in the conversation as conference champs last year definitely hurt those guys, the Bearcats down there. Minnesota State coming off a playoff berth last year. They finished 9-3, and three, had a solid season in the Northern Sun. They uh, they lead the all-time series, the Mavericks do, 9-8. to eight. They're 3-5 and five on the road, though, which is worth noting. The Bearcats have had success against the Mavericks at home. The last game between them was in 2012, and I do believe it was a double overtime type of contest. So that is pretty exciting. We talk about these two squads, though. The one glaring piece that is a little odd about this, both these squads not only losing their leading rusher, they are losing to the portal, and they lose them to a D1 squad that comes and poaches them. How about Sheen Butler Lawson from the Mavericks? That's 1,450 yards and 15 touchdowns on the ground alone. He gets picked up by Indiana State. And then you go Jay Harris on the other side of things for the Bearcats. 1,400 yards, 14 touchdowns. Sound familiar? Just on the ground. He's actually at Oregon. And uh, I think he got some decent reps in their spring game, so we'll see what he does here with, uh, with the Ducks this season. You lose... Really, two of the biggest playmakers in the offensive backfield in all of Division II football. And so now these teams are both faced with this problem of not how do you replace them, but how do you replicate their production, right? We're going to talk a lot about that with guys uh, that aren't returning for these squads. But very interesting predicament that both these squads are in and trying to replicate that production. That is a lot of carries for both these squads. They have to go out and get someone to uh, to pick up the load there. Also, you look in the offensive backfield for the Bearcats, they lose Mike Hohensee, who we've had on the program a couple times here. Uh, love the man down there. But that means the Bearcat offense, they need some people to step up. They might need to uh, find a little bit of a new identity behind some new faces. They do have a, a good bit returning, but again, some of those big-time playmakers on the offensive side are going to, uh, there's going to be some question marks in those spots, especially week zero. Now, they were picked third in the preseason poll behind UC and Pitt State, which makes a lot of sense. Uh, and then Mankato was picked third in the NSIC behind, I believe, Duluth and Augustana. So, two teams that uh, certainly have been given their respect, but have goals and aspirations for a lot more. Otherwise, on the news side of things, Mankato, they've got a new offensive quarter, a coordinator who was a former quarterback for the Mavericks. And uh, here I have the, the release right here. Ryan Schlicht, Schlicht the I've, sorry, brother. Sorry, I'll let y'all read it yourself. How about that? Go ahead and take a look. That's the new offensive coordinator for the Mavs uh, this year. And uh, they were excited about bringing in an alum. He's got a, a lot of experience at the Division II level as a coordinator. And um, recently, he was at Northern State. So he was coaching the wide receivers, then the quarterback, and then took over the offensive coordinator role uh, for the last uh, season or two, looked at the last two seasons there and had some good success with the Wolves. And uh, he was a four-year letter winner, three-year starting quarterback for the Mavericks, played in 50 games for Minnesota State, which is pretty sweet, and uh, went on three different playoff runs. So a guy that has some great experience, obviously in the coaching realm with the D2 level as a coordinator, but also someone who played at the school he's coming back to and, uh, more importantly, had some great success there. So that's a big-time addition for them. Looking at uh, some other news when it comes to this event, though, these two teams are doing something pretty cool uh, when it comes to honoring one of our friends of the show here. And that would be Brandon Meisner. Uh, you guys might know him as the man who is in charge of and runs D2Football.com and their inside D2Football show. Uh, he... Uh, they got a helmet decal going on for him. He suffered a, a stroke... Uh, back in May, and uh, you know, it's, it's just uh, since still been trying to recover. And obviously, we've been we've been out, you know, had some outreach on Twitter and other social media, and, and wishing him the best. And the D two squad is going to continue their coverage, which we love to see. But uh, hoping the best for him. They've got a custom helmet decal uh, for Brandon that they'll be debuting for this game. That I should 
be able to pull up for you right here. This is the decal that these teams will be wearing on the back of their helmet to honor Brandon Meisner. And uh, there is a GoFundMe campaign that's been launched to assist Brandon and his family. So if you guys uh, would like, it's on the link. The link you go to d2football.com um, or their Twitter pages or even this Northwest has uh, has a link to it here. So that is a pretty cool a pretty cool deal that they're doing over there. I love to see those guys uh you know, looking out for him and, and kind of honoring him in that way. He is still alive, by the way. He is still alive. So certainly keep him in your in your thoughts and prayers. But uh, some other notes on this. You talk about, this is a home game for the Bearcats, right, down at Northwest. Since the 2001 season, Northwest has gone 123-12 and 12 in Bearcat Stadium. That is outrageous. Eight of those 12 losses come against MIAA opponents. And... Uh, the four non-conference losses came against, one of them was Northern Colorado. Then you have Nebraska Omaha, Abilene Christian. Does that, anything sound familiar about these about these squads? None of them are Division II anymore, <laughs> right? And then Kingsville uh, was a 2010 season opener. But that is that is really ridiculous. 123-12 and 12 at home since the 2001 season. That's incredible. They also have 28 straight winning seasons. As, long as, as well as 12 consecutive season opening wins. So this is a squad that has, has had a lot of great success early in the year. Uh, you talk about them dominating the line of scrimmage as well. They were uh, number two in the nation in rush defense. And so we talked about trying to replicate the numbers from some of their, their backs when it comes to the offensive backfield. Their defense is going to step up to the task. So I'm excited to see this matchup. Uh, again, another physical one. Don't expect it to be a super high scorer, especially this early in the season. But I definitely would have the Bearcats taking the edge at home with their track record in that stadium and just everything that comes with it.